All righty. So, hello and welcome to the Waterloo, Waterloo Wednesday webinar. So, today is January 25th, um, and welcome to our very first Waterloo Wednesday webinar of the 2023 year. Woo! So, last fall we had um, about uh, we had three all about Waterloo sessions, um, so you can learn more about what to do or what we offered at the University of Waterloo through those. Um, so we're excited to keep that going um, throughout this term, bringing you two webinars a month, each with a different special um, topic right up until around June 1st or the end of May. And what better way to start off with a deep dive into the next steps and what to do after you have applied to the university. So thanks for tuning in. So for those of you needing captions, they can be turned on in your individual devices by clicking on the three dots on your menu or with the CC box um, at the bottom right of your screen. Once you select that, the captions will appear on your screen and you can go from there. So our Q&A is also now open. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to submit those and our team of recruitment staff, admissions officers and other student ambassadors are here to help answer as we go. We all, will also address some of those frequently asked questions during our Q&A session um, at the end of the webinar today. And of course, if you do have any questions later on, feel free to email us at liaison at uwaterloo.ca. So before we begin, I'd like to quickly introduce myself. So my name is Maggie. I go by she, her pronouns, and I am an undergraduate recruitment specialist for the university. I'm also a recent graduate um, of the Honor Science program here at Waterloo, and I'll be one of your co-hosts for the Waterloo Wednesday webinars that you'll be seeing throughout the term. Um, I'll pass it over to my other co-host, Kristen, for a short introduction as well. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Kristen. I'm the other co-host this evening. I go by she, her pronouns, and I'm the National Marketing and Recruitment Specialist here at Waterloo. Essentially, that just means I get to chat with prospective students such as yourselves across Canada, whether that be virtually, in person, and so on. I graduated um, slightly less recently than Maggie, but regardless, um, I graduated with an honors arts degree majoring in both anthropology and psychology, and I'm just really excited to be here today and hopefully we can chat about what's next, what's coming up. Now, as we go through the presentation today, you're probably going to hear stories from us about how over time the university has come to feel like our place. And although there is a really strong sense of belonging with the University of Waterloo, it is important and essential to acknowledge the history of the land that has been home to the university for over 60 years. So we do live, work, and study on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee's peoples. The University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldeman Tract, so this is land granted to the six nations that includes six miles on either side of the Grand River. Now, although we have gathered here remotely today, I hope you also take the time to say respect and acknowledge the traditional territories that you're currently located on as well. And across campus, we are engaged in active work on reconciliation, whether that be through research, teaching, community building, and so on. And much of this is centralized through our Office of Indigenous Relations. Personally, I have attended some workshops held by the Office of Indigenous Relations, and I have to say they're fantastic. Each time I attend a workshop, I recognize the importance of learning about our land's history, and I'm really grateful for the opportunities that this land and community has afforded me. But alrighty, let's dive in. Let's take a peek at this agenda. So what are we here to talk about today? We'll chat a little bit about upcoming events, kind of give you a peek into the Waterloo community, what's happening. And then we're going to talk about, say, the next steps. So what can you expect after you've applied? I'm going to point out a couple things here up and coming. If you're at all interested in, say, visiting us after uh, this presentation, say I say something that piques your interest, I'll let you know that we do in-person tours and virtual as well. We'll touch on this a little later in the presentation. You can also order view books and program brochures. You can do this so they get mailed right to your house or you can download a PDF version. Now, all events, info sessions, etc., will be actually posted on our website. You can see this on the upcoming slide here. You can follow this link. And we're actually planning something a little special for you in March. So if you want to keep uh, keep tuned or stay tuned in, whatever the expression is, by all means do so, but we'll let you know what's coming up. 
And the last little piece I want to point out is if you're at all interested, we have a website called the Missing Manual. This is information written by students for students. So sometimes it's a little nicer than say listening to me blab on. Uh, if you want to actually learn things like, hey, what do I want to study in university or what residence should I live in? Again, the Missing Manual is a website for students written by students, so you can check it out. And as Maggie said at the beginning, please always email us if you have any questions, liaison at uwaterloo. We'd love to uh, hear from you. But now I'm going to swing it back to Maggie um, because Maggie, as you know, as a co-host, we like to feature a story of the week to kind of highlight what's going on in the Waterloo community. And I was just thinking this week, is there a story that kind of stood out to you that you'd like to share? Yeah, of course. We always got so many stories going on at Waterloo. So um, this uh, week's story is about a lot about sustainability and what you can do to kind of reduce your carbon footprint. So um, as you may or may not know, Canadians trash about a billion pounds, so nearly 500 million kilograms of fashion and home items made from fabric every single year. Um, but a new grading system could help divert most of these from landfills. So researchers from the University of Waterloo and Seneca College partnered up and developed a new method to evaluate an item's quality from an A to an F scale and whether it can be resold, recycled, or um, tossed out. In testing this method, they found that more than half of these textile uh, wastes in Canada could be reused and almost a quarter uh, could be recycled, which is amazing or which is a really fantastic new finding to figure out. So um, this is a quote from Olaf Weber, a university research chair and professor in the School of Environment and Enterprise and Development at Waterloo. So he said, uh, reducing our waste is a crucial step in addressing climate change and avoiding the textile waste uh, assessed in our study could conserve resources and divert a significant amount of greenhouse um, gas emissions. So in just one year, the equivalent of driving 310,000, wait, 310, 100,000 cars, sorry, um, plus supplying energy to 218,000 Canadian homes and filling 35,000 Olympic pools of water. So as you can see, I stuttered because that is a very large number. Um, overall, this new comprehensive assessment delivers more data and insights into waste management and pre uh, prevention and provides a great insight on ways you can reduce uh, a commonly overlooked carbon footprint. So there are so many ways we can reduce, reuse, and recycle our old clothing pieces, pieces. Uh, so hopefully this gives you some new ideas or projects to take on with your clothing. But awesome job Waterloo and also Seneca College for helping us. So um, I will pass it on to Kristen on our next. Yeah, awesome. Love stories like that. But let's dive in to the content now. So perhaps you've already applied. Way to go. That's awesome. We're super excited that you're considering Waterloo. Or for those who say haven't applied yet, maybe you're not quite at that stage, no worries. This webinar we're uh, doing right now, we're going to give you some insights on the application process, say after you apply to the University of Waterloo in the future. But moving right along uh, in the application timeline, if you will, um, we're going to bump our way to February. So pretend we're there, if you will. It's coming up in a couple, couple days, but the next step, say after you've applied on the OUAC website or the Ontario University Application Center, everything is full of acronyms. After you've applied on that website, the next step is submitting all your documentation. So this includes anything from like high school transcripts, your admissions information form, interviews, English language tests if they pertain to your application and so on. So all documents are due February 17th. So I highly recommend making a nice little circle in your calendar and just because this is a really important deadline. Now, throughout the webinar, we're gonna to touch on each of these documentation pieces, what they look like, what they entail. And then later on in the webinar, we'll also talk about things you should consider, say, after you've applied, like finances, residency, joining Waterloo community, and so on. But if you haven't applied yet, I do just wanna give you a date to keep in mind. Make sure you apply by February uh, 1st. This is a big deadline, um, again, I'll say it one more time, February 1st, just keep that top of mind. But OK, we've talked about dates. Let's talk about documentation. Take it away, Maggie.
Maggie, you are muted. Oh, I am. Whoops. Sorry. Anyways, thanks, Kristen, and uh, thanks, Laura, for that. So um, let's dive into the documentation component. So this is a really big component for a lot of programs when applying into the University of Waterloo. First and foremost are going to be your grades. So if you are currently registered in Ontario High School, you will be applying using the OUAC 101 application and your high school will automatically send your grades uh, information to us through that OUAC. So no need to worry about that grades in that aspect. Um, for all other students outside of Ontario, however, uh, you will be using the OUAC OU5 or 105 application um, for full time studies and your grades should be uploaded through your quest profile. So more information about how to make your quest um, can be found within that uh, confirmation email that you do receive when you um, have applied into the university. Um, so we can also, just to note, use unofficial transcripts and report cards for emission. Uh, so just make sure to upload your transcripts um, onto Quest and you should be good on that front. So again, at Waterloo, so we know that grades aren't everything to you as a student. Um, it is the first component, uh, but we have a lot of additional opportunities to also showcase your talent as a student. So Kristen, if you want to dive into the next kind of steps and what kind of students can do to kind of, you know, um, help their application into the university as well. Absolutely. Yeah, let's dive into this part, my favorite. So exactly, Maggie, you're right. When we make admissions decisions, we look at other factors in addition to your grades. And so this is where the admissions information form, often we call it the AIF, really comes into play. Um, but commonly students are a little confused. What is the AIF? What does it entail? So let's chat a little bit about it. So the admissions information form is an online form to really let us get to know more about you. So we get to know more about you than just say as a student. Maybe you want to mention any extracurricular extracurricular activities you're involved in or say any awards you've won. And honestly, just allows you to kind of humbly brag about yourself. Now, the AIF is required for all faculty of engineering and all faculty of mathematics programs. So keep that in mind. And it's also highly recommended for all programs at Waterloo. But now that we've chatted about it, you think I want to humbly brag about myself, but how do I do that? So what do I write on my AIF? Well, here we've prepared just a few kind of tips on writing your AIF and what to think about. So before you even begin writing, we recommend brainstorming what you want to write ahead of time. So think about that part. Think about the extracurriculars you're involved in and maybe what you want to convey within your AIF. Now, when writing your AIF, don't overthink your answers. Just answer the question that's being asked in front of you and do your best to go off, not, excuse me, not to go off topic nor stray if you can help it. Also, if you can be as honest and authentic with your answers as possible, that's ideal. Again, the AIF is really the best way for us to get to know you. And so if you're able to do this uh, as authentically as possible, we really appreciate that. And lastly, a little tidbit uh, that we always appreciate if students take us up on it is always proofread your work. Actually, we recommend even like a family member or a teacher, they can take a look over your AIF before you even submit it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for all that. Um, so yeah, we'll deep dive. So just aside from your AIF, in addition to that, some programs will also require an interview component to supplement your application as well. So admissions interviews are available to students applying to any program within the Faculty of Engineering. So these interviews are optional, but are highly recommended for students uh, to partake in. Um, the interview, so what the interview component consists of is an online video with two questions being asked, and you'll be given time to formulate your responses during that time frame as well. So some great tips uh, to have for the interviews uh, to prepare for ahead of time um, by thinking of some things that you might want to say. Also finding a really quiet place to record your video responses also helps. And most importantly, just be yourself within these interviews. Again, it's to supplement your application. So this is the best chance for you to showcase how you are as a student and anything that you do outside of regular day studies as well, um, which can help with your admission into Waterloo. So for more tips, um, 
so for more tips and advice, sorry, to prepare for admissions interviews, uh, be sure to take a look at our missing manual article on how to go beyond your application. So again, as Kristen mentioned at the beginning, uh, these missing manual articles are written by students, um, uh, for students who specifically also have gone through the application process. So this is a really great uh, resource to be looking into in terms of how to prepare and just on uh, tips and advice in order to prepare for those um, interviews for admission. So the link will be put as an announcement later on. So uh, Kristen, if you want to deep dive into the next topic and we'll go more into specifics about other things um, aside from just AIF and your interviews as well. Yeah, absolutely. I love the term deep dive. We're going to dive into architecture next. I'm just teasing, but we are. So speaking of the Faculty of Engineering, one of the programs within this faculty is architecture and architecture has a few different admission components uh, alongside it. So in addition to the AIF, which is required, um, selected students actually applying to this program will also need to submit a portfolio and complete, excuse me, and complete a Precy's writing exercise and a presentation at a later date. Now, let's talk a little bit about these pieces individually because it can sound a little overwhelming. So let's start with the portfolio. Now, there are no specific requirements regarding the type of work used within your portfolio. You can include whatever work you feel best demonstrates your creative interests and abilities. So it could be anything. We do recommend that your portfolio consists of recent work, however, and the recommended number of pieces to include is 10. Now, the next piece is the interview component. This usually happens in mid-April. Now, the interview can be done in person or it can be over a video presentation. And this is, again, an awesome opportunity for us to learn more about your interest and your motivations. And then lastly is the English Precies writing exercise. This is also administered in mid-April, that same time period. And the purpose of this exercise is really like a critical thinking and reading skills exercise for us to look at. Now, all of these components, I just want to keep note, if you want to be um, considered for the architecture program, all of these components have to be completed. So if you're interested, this is just something, you know, kind of keep on your radar as we're coming up to the document deadline in mid-April. But I'll pass it back to Maggie. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. So um, again, so for architecture applicants, more information on those supplementary components will be emailed around mid-March um, for selected applicants. So just make sure to check your email every now and then um, when it comes time. Um, so now let's talk about another type of documentation needed for accounting and financial management and sustainability and financial, man financial management applicants. Um, so the School of Accounting and Finance Admissions Assessment, so or SAFA or SAFA uh, for short, it is required for AFM and SFM uh, applicants to complete this assessment. So the assessment comes in two parts, an interview component and a trait assessment component. So the interview component consists of three recorded interview questions to assess the ability to communicate appropriately in a clear, concise, um, organized and professional manner. The trait assessment, um, on the other hand, is a series of survey questions to assess areas of leadership, collaboration, adaptability, and problem solving skills. So both of these uh, components are required to be completed to be considered into the AFM or SFM program. And a reminder that the deadline to complete both of these uh, would be February 17th. So that big uh, documentation deadline. So just keep that in mind. So for more tips and best practices on how to complete the assessment, check out again another great missing manual, uh, missing manual article. So it provides lots of information on what to expect, um, how to access the assessment, and also tips on how best to write it. So again, if you are a AFM or SFM student who's interested in those programs, definitely uh, read into this missing manual article. It has tons of great information about that. So last reminder, again, uh, that all documentation is due February 17th. So this includes, again, things like your transcripts, the AIF, the interviews, and the assessments depending on your specific program. So just keep that all, uh, all that in mind. But another great date to kind of circle in your calendar is February 17th. So do not miss this deadline. It is a really big one. Now I'll pass it on to Kristen about what to do once you've kind of completed the documentation and what to expect. 
Excellent. Yeah, this is a big piece. This is the biggest question we get. You've applied, you've submitted everything. You're like, I'm on the ball. Big question is, when am I going to hear back? So admissions decisions are made between January and May, depending on the program you've applied to and whether you're in an Ontario high school or not. But the caveat I should say is that most offers of admission at Waterloo are made in May. So M-A-Y, they're made in May. Once we've received midterm marks from Ontario high school, so that's typically what we're waiting for. There are a limited number of earlier offers of admission that do get released at certain points, but overall you can always check the status of your application through Quest, which is our uh, student portal. You can do this at any time to just see what uh, where your application is at. But now in the meantime, let's talk about some fun stuff. Let's discuss some things that you might say look into after you've applied. So we'll take it to Maggie. All right, so just some, uh, there's a lot of things to consider potentially um, after you applied into university. So things such as like tuition, your finances, residency, and so much more going on. So let's talk about some of these things to start planning ahead. So firstly, we have tuition costs. So that's the big money question, you know, for everyone. So we know university expenses can add up. So again, we do really uh, try to help best uh, subsidize those costs as best as we can. So each year we offer financial support for our talented students. And in summary, you're automatically considered for um, our entrance scholarships just based off your grade 12 academic average and uh, which can range anywhere from $1,000 all the way up to $5,000. We also have lots of entrance bursaries for, available to students for uh, to apply for, so definitely be on the lookout for those um, after you apply or once you apply into Waterloo. So more information um, about scholarships and financing can be found on our websites on uwaterloo.ca, but we also have another Waterloo Wednesday webinar coming up on February 8th, so uh, which will be focusing on financing your education. So more information about scholarships and bursaries and things like that uh, will be available um, February 8th. We have another webinar coming up, so be sure to tune in um, for that webinar if that interests you and you want to learn more. All right, so let's talk about residence up next. So we offer a first year residence guarantee, uh, which means you will be able to live on campus and we also have a spot for you in one of our 12 residences. So costs for two academic terms range from um, 6,218 to eight, uh, $8,155, depending on the style that you've chosen. And later in the season, um, actually as well, we will have a Waterloo Wednesday webinar talking about campus housing um, and another one just about the university colleges and what they offer as well. So if you are interested in residency and um, the university colleges later on, make sure to sign up for both of those to learn more about the different residence options that are available on the Waterloo campus. So overall, uh, residence is such a great way to meet new people and transition into the university lifestyle. So another great missing manual article is uh, to read about is one about the benefits of living on campus, which is about some of the reasons why you should live on campus in your first year. So again, really great article to read up on um, once you've kind of applied into uh, Waterloo and the university. So I'll pass it off to Kristen to talk more about other things you can do as well. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of living in residence. I lived in residence first year, second year, was a Don in third year. Fantastic experience. They basically booted me out, so highly recommend it. Now, if you're thinking about living in residence and you're considering, okay, what ones might I want to tour, a great way to do that is actually if you want to come to our March break open house. So I kind of teased this at the beginning, but this year we'll be hold holding a March break open house on March 18th. So yet another date you could circle in your calendar. But this is a really great opportunity. Come to campus, kind of feel it out, see if it, the vibe is right for you, and you can have any of your questions actually answered that day. We will have, say, student ambassadors, academic advisors, and professors all there to chat with you. And again, you know, any questions that are on your mind, our goal is to help you get the answers there. Now, again, I would circle March 18th in your calendars just as a special day to look forward to. But Worst case scenario, say if you can't come to March break open house, you already know the 18th isn't a good date for you. Again, you can always book a campus tour. 
So I'll say this again, you can book a campus tour, whether this is in person or virtually. So you can do this on our website. We'll uh, post the link again in the chat. Here, you can come see the campus on your own time. We also offer faculty specific tours, residence tours, and even university college tours as well. But more information about these tours, all of our events up and coming, more information sessions at these Waterloo Wednesday webinars, we can actually find uh, through our websites. So we'll put that up for you. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. So make sure to write those dates down uh, if you haven't already. So there's a lot of dates that we mentioned and they're all going to be very important in terms of, you know, staying connected and staying in the know uh, in terms of Waterloo. So now we're ear, uh, nearing the end of our session, but just before we wrap up um, all of this amazing information, Kristen and I have compiled some tips and advice uh, for you all in regards to consider things to consider when you're waiting from a response from us at Waterloo. So here are some of those tips. So for myself, um, definitely try to do your best in terms of academics. So again, obviously grades aren't going to be everything, um, but by putting in the hard work now, uh, not only will it pay off later, but you're also going to be able to develop really good habits um, when you step into university and when you do get in. So um, that's a really great advice that I can give just from my personal experience as well. And aside from your academics, I also suggest getting involved as much as possible in high school so it really helps to have a few extracurriculars as an outlet and um, not only will it help kind of supplement your application in terms of your AIF form and things like that um, it can help um, in terms of like when you are presenting yourself to um, us as a university and can help you get into university with those extracurriculars. So again, just really be aiming, uh, being able to showcase your passion, but getting involved um, within your high school is a really great way in order to find a lot of those passions through that. So another great tip of mine is uh, is to also just check the status of your application every now and then. Uh, so this is a really good way to see how your application is moving along and to see if you might be missing any information while you're waiting. So just, you know, log on to Quest uh, to check every now and then. And that's a great way to kind of keep in tune in terms of how your application is moving along through that process. Um, again, so you might not hear from the university about acceptances for a little while, um, but don't stress out too much. Um, every application is different in that sense, so don't stress out too much if your application or if you haven't heard from us in that sense as well. Uh, lastly, I highly recommend everyone to visit campus and go on those tours, uh, just as Kristen mentioned just before this, um, and also to come to our open houses as well. So this is how I actually ended up deciding um, to choose Waterloo as a high school student, and it's just a great way to, again, see how the University of Waterloo might be a good fit for you or might be not, just depending on how your vibe is. And uh, it's a great way to also chat with a lot of friendly faces and ask a lot of the questions that you might have on the day of. So um, somewhat like this photo is uh, being shown. This is when I was in my undergraduate years and um, I chose Waterloo after talking to a science ambassador at an open house. And two years later, after accepting my offer, I was actually able to become one. So it really comes full circle, but it was such a great way to, you know, see the university and uh, and if it was a good fit for me and eventually it was. So that's why I ended up choosing that. And those are some of the tips and advice that I can give you as kind of just a recent undergraduate graduate, undergraduate student, and um, just as a recent, um, you know, person as well. So yeah, I'll pass it on to Kristen for her tips and advice as well. Thank you. Those were great. Absolutely agree with so many of those. Echo those. I say ditto. So thank you. Um, some of my personal tips would be now that you've say decided on kind of what you want to study and maybe what universities you're applying to. I always suggest, you know, starting to ask the more difficult questions or the more informative questions where you're thinking about what supports are offered to you as a student. So, for example, um, what kind of academic supports are available, like writing workshops or say test taking sem seminars and so on. Um, so, for example, at the University of Waterloo, we have what's called the Student Success Office, and this offers a variety of resources for students to say help with different academic skills like note taking or even just figuring out your learning style. I actually use the Writing Center on campus quite a bit. Writing essays was really never my strong suit. So I personally really loved that academic support. So there's all kinds of those offered on campus. 
And then moving outside of academics, what personal supports are there on campus, say for health and wellness? Are there any that interest you? So are there any clubs or even support groups or say um, mentorship programs? I personally was a residence Don, so I was an upper year student who lived with first years, and this allowed me to kind of build that mentorship relationship, and it was something I really valued as a first year student. So that was something that interested me. But overall, my point of these two different uh, pieces of advice is that while your university experience is so much built around what you're studying, there's also so much outside of that. So, so much of your experience comes from outside the classroom and there are tons of available supports on campus to help that experience be a positive, positive and successful one. All right, awesome. Thanks, Kristen, for those tips. So um, now that we have gone through all this information, we now have a quiz for you. So in the next slide, it has three questions for you all to kind of answer. And in the Q&A box, uh, send us the three correct responses plus your email all within one submission. So it is really important that you submit your answers and your email all together. So don't hit that enter button unless everything is already there. So um, if you're one of the first two um, correct responses that we received, we'll actually send you your very own Waterly Worries hoodie. So I know Kristen's gonna be wearing that hoodie later so she can kind of showcase that. Um, so remember, uh, just before we begin the quiz, email and three answers all in one response so ready so let's flip to the next slide so the first question we have is what is the deadline to submit all documentation second question is what is the name of one of our speakers today and third question is what day is march break open house of this year so again make sure to submit all your answers plus include your email in your message and um, make sure to enter that all within one submission so we'll look through some of the q a's to see who potentially won let's see This is exciting. Let's see who wins. Okay, so I see a few. I see, see Jonathan was early. Yeah. Jonathan. I and got a Jonathan here. And I think. Let's see. Oh. And I think. Sienna. Yeah, so I think awesome. Jonathan and Sienna here. I will make sure to. Copy that, but yeah, OK, Jonathan and Sienna. So you are this week's quiz winner, so thank you so much. And uh, we will contact you through email um, that the email that you provided us um, about how to claim your prize later. So definitely check out your email after this uh, one of the Wednesday webinar. So I'll pass it on to Kristen to start the Q&A portion of our segment. Yeah, absolutely. And just want to give a shout out for the quiz question answers. Um, the first answer was February 17th, so congratulations. I'm super excited to see all of those who got that right because that's it means you're right on the deadline. And then uh, co-host was either myself, Kristen or Maggie. And then March break open house is March 18th. So well done everyone. I see a lot of good answers in the chat, so that's awesome. But now let's kick it off, like Maggie said, with a few frequently asked questions. So what at this point do we find we're getting students to ask us? Certainly a lot of questions revolve around when will I hear back? And if I do hear back, will I hear back if it's a yes or a no or both? Absolutely. So if you apply, regardless of what the outcome of your application is, we will let you know regardless in an email. So the University of Waterloo never leaves one application unturned. And so basically what I mean by that is that we will always communicate with you in email if you get in or so on. So always check your email. In fact, that's something I think students, a piece of advice I should have included, was just keep that email, uh, keep refreshing. 
And then one other question that we often get at this point too is, uh, should I submit a resume or a letter of recommendation for admissions? Now, because we have the admissions information form, you actually don't need to submit a say letter of recommendation and so on, just because that form is where you're gonna brag about yourself. So by no means feel pressured to do so. There are very select programs at Waterloo that actually require that. But most of them, if you're just coming out of high school and applying, don't worry about it. Focus on that admissions information form. All right. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. So another great question that we always uh, um, or get asked is, has the deadline passed or can students still apply? So um, the deadline to apply is February 1st. So it is like within the next week. So if you are applying or considering Waterloo or just applying to university even in general, um, that deadline to apply is February 1st and just make sure to apply through the OUAC website. So whether that be the OUAC 101 that I mentioned or the 105, um, but just make sure to apply through there and you still have some time left to apply to universities through that website. So just make sure to apply before February 1st. So that deadline is again February 1st. Um, so another question that we get is when can students hear back with offers? So we kind of gone through this um, with through uh, our webinar. So as Kristen mentioned, um, typically a lot of our offers are, majority of our offers are given out mid-May. So um, you may not hear um, between sometime in February until May. So there could be a wide variety of when you hear back every now and then. So um, my best tip is to just uh, check your quest every now and then to see how your application is moving along. And who knows, you might hear from us very early on or you might hear from us near the end towards that uh, early mid-May section. So just keep that in mind in terms of that. But again, we will also email you um, when we do, um, you know, process through your application and whether or not you have been accepted into the university. So just keep an eye on your email and also check quests if you feel free to do so. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it to Kristen for the next couple of questions. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Always check quests. That's going to be the place where we upload or change your status. That's going to be your soonest point of contact. So that's a great place to look. Um, one other question that we often get is students typically, not all, but some will apply to multiple programs. So say you apply to three different Waterloo programs. The question is, if I get into one, does that mean I won't get into my other two or anything like that? And the great news, the answer is no. So you can technically apply to three different Waterloo programs and get offers to all three. We would never say, um, give, we would never deny a student if they got into one program and that means, okay, they're not going to get into science or whatever. Nope, you can always get uh, you can always get into all three should you be admissible. So that's good news. Um, another question we often get as well at this point is when it comes to offers, and I see one in the chat here about if I don't get into Waterloo, will you let me know right away? This kind of depends on the program you're applying to. Sometimes we let you know right away. Other times we may not let you know until mid-May as well. But the great news is that you have until June 1st to decide where you want to go. And why this is great is that all Ontario universities have agreed that June 1st is our deadline. So all students can choose to go somewhere by June 1st. That means if you say accept an offer somewhere and then you get a late offer to Waterloo, you can always switch, vice versa and so on. It's the June 1st confirmation deadline is what we call it. So you always have some time to think about where you wanna go. We'll have webinars coming up where we talk more about that deadline, so don't panic right now, but just know that we will always give you enough time to think about your offer or so on that if you want to come or not. So something to think about. Now, Maggie, I know I went off track there, but uh, by all means, please go ahead if you have other questions. No, awesome. It was great. Yeah, that's a very good question as well that, um, you know, like just how to apply and all that kind of stuff. So great information that you provided, Kristen. Um, so another great question that we always get is, uh, for example, what kind of scholarships are available for students? So um, as I kind of mentioned, we do have a lot of um, entrance scholarships that are available for, um, you know, students coming in um, that are applying. So a lot of those entrance scholarships are based off your grade 12 academic average. Within that grade 12 academic average are going to be any of those required courses that are within. So at Waterloo, we take your top six grade 12 URM level courses 
and within those top six are going to be any of those required. So that academic average is the overall average that we get from those six courses, and then we'll reward you based on that academic average as well. So uh, with that being said, they range anywhere again from $1,000 to $5,000. So just depending on where you land. Um, and also something to note is that once you do receive an offer from us, we will give you a scholarship just uh, based off of the academic average that you have been admitted with. But for example, say if you have um, been able to kind of increase your grades sometimes before you come into the university and before you end up graduating, you can always end up kind of bumping up your scholarship as well. So for example, like um, if it's like after a little bit after June 1st and say you graduated with like, I don't know, a 90% degree, um, you can always bump up to that next um, scholarship level. So we'll grant whatever is going to be the highest and also we won't ever take away your scholarship um, if if that situation ever does occur. So just keep that in mind again, long story short, just do the best as you can in terms of your academic average um, and then we will honor you as best as we can with any of those scholarships that we have available. Um, so uh, of course we also have a lot of different ways for that as well. We have a lot of scholarships that you can apply to as a student so every single application just has a different type of um, like thing like components of them that you need to complete so just keep that in mind when you are applying into scholarships but we have a whole scholarships and bursaries like database online so if you just look up financial aid at U Waterloo, um, there's going to be a whole list and database that you can access as a um, high school student as well when you're coming in so something to look into as well um, as you're preparing for that and lastly if you need more information about scholarships again we do have a whole webinar um, uh, session coming up on February 8th. Um, so if you want more information on that scholarship aspect, be, uh, be sure to stay tuned in about two weeks time uh, where we talk more and deep dive into those scholarships and financial aid and everything like that. Um, so yeah, those are all those different types of scholarships that we have kind of going into that and uh, yeah, um, making sure just to cover those bases. Um, so yeah, Kristen, um, there's a question here as well. So what are like the different styles of residences and like how does residence work and everything like that? Yeah, totally great question, especially because as I said, I was keen on residence when I lived there on campus. So in terms of residence styles, we offer a variety. So everything from like single rooms to double rooms to apartment styles, and there's over 12 different accessible residences on campus. What I like about residence at Waterloo is that you can pick if you want to be a part of like a bigger community. So those tend to be like Village One and so on, as well as if you want to be a part of a smaller community. So those are university colleges. I was a part of St. Jerome's uh, University, but you can also be a part of Renison, a part of United, as well as Conrad Grable. Those tend to be, like I said, a little smaller. Depending on them, they can be around 150, 200, 300 students. What I like about how residence works again at Waterloo is that you get to kind of pick the size of community you want to be in. I was from a small town, so for me particularly, the smaller uh, residences was really appealing. But how it works, enough about my personal stories, how it works is that if you choose to come to Waterloo by June 1st, you would say confirm your offer. Say you got into mechatronics engineering, you're like, yep, I confirm my offer on the OUAC website. And then I confirm also if I want to live on residence that day. So basically you select, yes, I want to live in residence, and then you'll pay a $500 deposit. Basically what that does, it allows us to know that, yep, this person, Maggie said she's going to live in residence. So following that, you'll actually get a form from us kind of mid June where you fill out your preferences. So this is where you can talk about, I kind of want to live in say a traditional double room or single room and so on. And then we actually reach out to you back about like even roommate preferences. I'll also point out um, if you know someone who's coming to Waterloo and you both want to live together, you have 100% guarantee that you can live with one another if you both put each other on the form as saying, yeah, I want to live with Maggie. Maggie wants to live with Kristen. You can absolutely live together. So something to think about too if you're coming in with a friend. Um, but otherwise, residence is a great way to meet people, but it's always going to happen around that June 1st is when we kind of get that ball, ball rolling. So you got lots of time to think about it. And we also have a first year residence guarantee. So if you want to bet on campus, there's absolutely one there for you. Something to think about. Um, one other question, just because I like to kind of look at the chat to see what students are thinking about. 
Um, we have a couple of questions around, say, um, if I were to rank Waterloo um, on when I'm applying, say I rank U of T University of Toronto first, then I rank Waterloo second and Carleton third or something. Does my ranking on the OUAC website affect my chances of getting in? And great news, the answer is no. So you can rank us third, you can rank us 23rd, you can rank us first. We will consider your application just the same. And so don't let your heart be troubled if that's something that you're concerned about. We will always look at you as a fresh application. Now, outside of that, I'll just also clarify. I see a few questions in here about um, how we make admissions averages, because when you're applying to university, there's all this jargon around admissions average averages, URM courses and so on. So I'll just point out that an admissions average is your top six grade 12 courses that are at the university or mixed level, including any required courses. So for example, engineering has five required courses. It has English, it has uh, calculus, it has advanced functions, chemistry and physics. Outside of that, we'd look at your other highest URM course. So that can be a variety of things as long as it's URM level. Comparatively, arts, that, pro, that faculty only has one required course of English. So because of that, we'd look at five other URM level courses. Those six overall are making up that incoming average. That's what we use to determine who gets offers in terms of admissions averages, as well as scholarships. So Maggie did a great job talking about scholarships there. That's that average we're looking at. So just for a point of clarity, because I could see a couple questions coming in and it's a lot of jargon, so I totally get that. Yeah, thanks for the clarification, Kristen. Yeah, it is a lot to kind of, you know, process in terms of the academic average and scholarships and whether or not you, um, you know, get it or not. So thank you for clarifying that. And hopefully that makes sense for a lot of us. But again, if you do have any questions later on, feel free to email us at liaison at ULR.ca and we can help clarify it that way as well. So just uh, looking at the time, we'll have one more question. So a really frequently asked question that we also get is how can students connect with current students to hear about experiences in a program? So this is a great question. So um, there's a lot of ways that high school students can connect um, to know more information about the program that they're interested in. A really great way is a Ask a Warrior chat. So we do have a lot of different types of Ask a Warrior chats. So um, we have things like engineering chats, we have um, science Ask a, War uh, Ask a Warrior chats, and every single fact faculty has um, ambassadors that you can chat with one-on-one -on -one, uh, to you know connect with or have a meeting with, and you can ask anything from um, their daily student life to things like um, academic, uh, um, averages and things that needed uh, needed to get into the program and anything like that of that sort. So um, again, these students are current students um, in their program. So of course they've been through that um, process that you're going through and everything. So they know um, what you're going through and know exactly that they were once in that same boat. So um, if you ever want more information about your program that you're interested in or any more experiences, I highly recommend just uh, connecting with a current student or connecting with an ambassador just to um, make a uh, meeting with them. It's a one on one chat and they can definitely ask all those questions as well. Um, further on, we also do have our liaison um, inbox, as I just mentioned, like a few minutes ago. So we can also try and help you as best as we can in terms of uh, more information about a program. Um, but the best way is to connect with uh, a current student is through those Ask a Warrior chats. So I will put the link in the chat um, in our Q&A. And uh, if you want more information on that, just make sure to check out that website and there will be um, more hyperlinks that lead into um, specifically which program that you're interested in um, from there. Um, so with that being said, just looking at the time, so that pretty much wraps up our Q&A portion for today. Um, so just uh, again, thank you for coming out for the Waterloo Wednesday. So just a few reminders to again, just keep on your radar. So um, you can always book a campus tour with us again, whether in person or through virtually. Um, I, it's just a great way to, you know, get a feel for the university campus um, and you can also get a campus tutor or 
tutor. You can also get a campus tour that is more catered to what program you are interested in or um, you know more specifics about um, the area that you could be interested in. So um, always book a campus tour just to get a feel for what the university campus is like. And you can also uh, talk to a current student because the uh, ambassadors that take you on them are current students. So again, great information to um, get as a resource when you are going on these campus tours. You can also order brochures online, so um, you just uh, can get them from the uwaterloo.ca uh, website and we'll get those uh, brochures sent to your door for free. So um, if you ever want more information as well, but you don't want to come on campus and you just want to be able to view it in person in your own um, in your own home, you can always get those brochures sent right to your door as well. Um, so uh, that basically wraps up our Waterloo Wednesday. Um, thank you so much for coming all out and hopefully we'll see you for the February 8th one, which is all about scholarships and financing your education. So hopefully we'll see you there and have a good night. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone.